Yo, what's up, my man? What up? <clears throat> what up? What's going on? I see you got the, you got the American flag, like, right side up. <laughs> what's going on? What's that? It's <clears throat> upside American... down. Oh, it is upside down. It's just that the white stripe is, like, perfectly aligned to make it look like that's the wall instead of the flag. You yeah. got to fix that. There you go, bro. Man, make it look right. There you go. <laughs> don't no, want people, <laughs> don't want people mis mistaken. Yeah, right. I was like, what happened to you? <laughs> Hold That's on, hold on. Yeah. Let's like just change these lights. Uh, actually, it's, like, it's did fine. Jeff, did Jeffrey get cloned and, you know, reprogrammed by the Matrix or something? Yeah. He got, he got cloned. Um. So what's up, man? Nothing much. Saturday night, January. Jeez, is it? 23, yeah. What you been doing? I'm not today? like a date keeper kind of guy. Uh, today's been pouring rain. Yeah. So I just sat inside and I uh, made a couple videos and I was on a podcast and uh, I uploaded a pretty cool Mark Passio video to my YouTube. Uh -huh. um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was always like before this is our first live stream and before I caught you today, I was always like, should I catch him on a day when he's had no previous podcast that day or should i catch him when he's on a roll you know when the brain's in in gear you know i was like well yeah i did you, a, seemed, you, you seemed indifferent to it so i was like all right well i did do a, a i did do a interview it wasn't even like a hostile debate or anything <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago with this guy and it was in the morning and i didn't really like how I you looked or for. performed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I was like, oh man, I gotta make sure I just do things later in the day. Cause I'd like gotten up a little early or I like didn't sleep that great the night before. So I was just kind of like haggard looking and like I just wasn't as as quick. But um uh, yeah, dude, yeah. There's some there's some days where I'm much better than others. Like today's a good day, but there are days where um you know no man is equal to anyone else not even himself on different days you know yeah i don't yeah. i don't know if i feel i guess i mean obviously if there's like it, serious environmental issues you know but i feel pretty sharp all the time that's good uh, yeah, yeah. Like said, it's a vegan diet you know keeping the blood sugar at a constant and, something uh, yeah, for something. all the carbs yeah. Unlimited carbs, man. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, so, scary. Um, yeah, scary fucking vegetables, man. So uh yeah, any any health tips? I got some um got some supplements, gonna try out some. I think it's Tongwat Ali. I, I heard about that. Yeah, I supplements don't do anything. Yeah, I tried ashwagandha, it didn't, <laughs> it didn't seem to do anything. No, the I just thing, actually the one thing that I think is actually I don't even think it's legit. I uh I know it's legit. Uh vitamin C. Right in the seeds really is, good, uh, yeah, you know, that'll help you lose weight. Gin ginkgo biloba works like magic. It's um, really? it, it dilates blood vessels. And so if you want more blood flow, especially hmm. to the brain, um, you know, I don't know. Interesting. Uh, I've never yeah. heard that in sports nutrition because I know what ginkgo biloba is. I was alive in the 90s when it was found mm -hmm. and marketed to the masses it's a big, yeah it's an old yeah. one for a long time for sure but i would have thought that that would have been something um i mean maybe it is maybe i'll try it out i know like uh, beta alanine is really good for um like uh uh well that's that's performance that's not weight loss necessarily but i just did a video a couple weeks ago my buddy jordan um he used to be a pretty big dude mm -hmm. and he did uh calories in calories out and lost my weight off of him you know like i i think yeah. at least you know uh, a lot of weight and uh but mm -hmm. uh he hit a wall which is what happens to most ketos and carnivores um they only lose they do lose a lot because they are giving up the standard american diet yes so a lot of what the ketos and carnivores see as results are actually results of getting off the standard American diet, not 
technically keto or carnivore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's just simply, you know, and if you if you if you rob your body of one of the things that's normally, you know, macro wise, one of the things that it's used to living off of, um, you know, we're 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 designed to work off glucose. Uh, we have glucose receptors on our tongues. We don't have fat or protein receptors on our tongues. It's not something that we were designed. We were designed to make enough protein, uh, to make enough uh, fat and cholesterol and all that stuff. So, so, um, so yeah. So, um, so yeah, we were designed to run off glucose. So if you take away, um, you know, e either fat or protein or, or carbs, you're going to lose weight, you know, but getting rid mm -hmm. of the getting uh people it's harder to get rid of the fat and protein you know people uh, in our society we've been brainwashed by marketers that protein is the most important thing we need in the world when really it's only super important to us um you know if we're if we're like a baby you know like growing like a yeah. lot or if we're arnold schwarzenegger and we're a bodybuilder or we need we have some job you know like fire you know like some sort of practical reason why you need to lift well, heavy shit all day so, you know so like you, uh, you i mean you and Allie are doing a lot of miles on the bike especially last year right this year i don't know i don't know if you guys have do it seasonally i mean la uh, right? no we we ride nonstop. we're only not yeah. riding now because it's raining and Allie broke her clavicle yeah the collarbone man so yeah. um yeah so i mean you guys must get sore muscles but you get enough protein not really it's strange after a while i just don't get sore anymore yeah muscles are interesting i don't know the exact science but uh, i guess they don't necessarily have to break down you can you know i mean you put a i don't know a good analogy but you don't necessarily have to rebuild muscle i suppose well you do you don't need as much protein as you say they need mm -hmm. and and all that excess protein you know they're saying uh, we we me and Allie did the math on um it's like uh ounces per kilo of protein that's really that that like is universally known how many ounces per and it's something like it's like 48 or something you know like that we really mm -hmm. need throughout the day it's like 40 48 for men and like 38 for women or something like that oh, but yeah. people are consuming several hundred you know, and, and so that that protein either goes in your stomach and putrefies and causes like stomach cancers and stuff, or it turns into fat. Um, my, um, you know, like people that will just make a protein smoothie and not go work out. That's basically they're they're pouring lard into their smoothie. You know, like it's not. Unless you're doing something that you really need it for, and I'm not saying like walking out to your car and driving to work and walking to your desk. I'm saying like really, you know, because yeah. most of these dudes that are like telling me this shit, they don't move in their day, you know, and like and they're not moving right. around and doing anything mm -hmm. like I am. So mm -hmm. it's like unless you really need it. And I, as, as, you know, me and Allie as endurance athletes, we don't even need it, you know, like. I don't want more weight. More weight is more work I have to do to get myself around on the bike. It doesn't make sense. And that's also yeah, the other good. thing. Like what, yeah. like everyone, like if you go to the gym, no matter what, you go to one of these trainers, right? They're going to give you a bodybuilder's diet. They're going to say, eat tons of protein, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, the country looks the way it does. Um, is because that you know there's just this 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 marketing that we've been duped for over the years um and i mean ever since i was a kid it was sugar bad um fat bad but then they're like oh no now all of a sudden fat good Keep totally it. good <laughs> eat as much of it as you want till it's squeezing out of your eyes and your ears you know um and uh it just uh doesn't really let me get this closer it, it's Everyone is different. Everyone does different things in their lives. I, as they like, I all day, I got people 
well, you're, you're not strong. You're not muscly. And I don't want to be muscly. I'm an endurance athlete. I'm an endurance cyclist. Yeah, well, speaking, <laughs> upper speaking body. Of, uh, I, I don't want a big upper body. You know, like that's not yeah. what I want. I, I kind of want to look like a crackhead. You know, my girlfriend's into that kind of thing. Cause like yeah, she's I mean, a cyclist, I, like you know, like I'm it's the same way. Yeah. Everyone's different, I'm so I'm built. I'm I got like a big frame naturally, and you know, I've put on a some weight, and so I'm I got a bad knee. So I'm actually trying to just I'm not trying to make any new muscle. I'm just trying to save pounds so my yeah. knee doesn't have to carry around as much. So I'm I've always been like a European at heart. Like I've always loved soccer. I've always loved cycling. My dad's a big cyclist. He's in. My dad is 60 and he's better shaped than I am. It just he's very wiry and he's like yeah. he's like looks like he looks like a Tour de France rider. Everyone talks shit about he's the all, ecto all ectomorphic man. ectomorphic body type, but that's kind of the most efficient body <laughs> type we have as humans, you know, yeah. the kind of wiry, lean, strong yeah. but lean, you know, like like Everyone, but but yeah, everyone's different, and and the bodybuilder diet isn't the greatest diet for everyone. But even like if you go to a dietitian and ask them, you know, how to lose weight, they're gonna tell you eat more protein, and it's just like, no. Yeah. You know, so like, um, speaking, well, back back to cycling. Have you thought? Do you guys like ride? Is L.A. the best place to ride, or have you guys found other parts of the world? better there are other parts of the world to ride but i don't know if there's many better places in the united states to ride um we yeah, have i can see that i can see that i think la would be pretty solid i mean for one we can ride pretty much year round there's maybe a month total we can't ride where it's just like oh it's cold because riding yeah. riding in the colds yikes um yeah. you know you i i, I ally doesn't it doesn't bother ally because she's uh you know gung-ho about it but when she tries to pull me out on the cold days i'm just like i barely like this at all in the heat <laughs> yeah, <cold laughs> you know sucks. Cold sucks, man. Yeah. but but yeah. um you know and, and just doing the cycling like ali does the cycling like she's taught me to do you start to know what when you put something in your body whether it's working or not because the next day on the bike you either feel like shit or you feel like a million bucks and so far you know unlimited carbs ever since i went unlimited like the uh, the month i i started my unlimited carb regimen like i i've made nearly 300 like videos on youtube since then and before that i had only done like 30 you know like there were like uh -huh. major differences in my lifestyle that changed once I went unlimited carb. I don't feel fatigue ever, ever, ever anymore. Um, yeah. I don't uh, just I've calmed down in general. Yeah, um, just overall um, there. And, and then just like I heal, like I heal yeah. so fast. It's not even funny. I save like I'm always lean and I like when I was a meat eater or when I was eating standard American diet, I was constantly fluctuating. And that's when I was younger, like my whole life. Yeah. And I was always skinny, but I would I would gain weight and it would look like shit. Yeah. And I'd be like, Ugh. and then yeah. I go to lose yeah. weight and I lose too much and I'd be too skinny. And then it was always back and forth because I'd yeah. I'd be like, oh, shit, I'm getting a beer belly. And so I'd like do things to try and lose weight. Then I'd lose way too much. And it was this constant fluctuation or I go to the gym, yeah. finally get like. <laughs> finally get like some gains and like three days later they're gone oh. you know where it's just like jesus christ like where did that go and yeah. it's your body you know eating stuff because you aren't getting enough carbs and i was always pretty low carb like and i was completely i was completely carnivore for a while so i've tried all these things and you know I'm probably the only person you've ever met who was vegan for like five, six years and then was not vegan and went carnivore and then went That's back. A good point. To, yeah, it's, it's, went back to it's being good, vegan yeah. after all. And I've 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 had the greatest success uh, now because when I was first vegan, when I was a kid, I was a teenager. I didn't know how to do it right. So I was extremely unhealthy. Like the, the most yeah. unhealthiest I've ever been was when I was vegan. And the healthiest I've ever been was when I was vegan. So it's like, it's all about how you yeah. do it. And that's the problem with all these people talking shit and all these people making these videos all like vegan fails after blah, you know, and it's like, 
that person failed because they didn't do it right. Not because the diet was bad or the idea that not consuming or buying any products from animals is bad, you know, because that person failed. And I got people all the time. Oh, my friend did it or I did it. And I, I'm not now because this it's like so. So you're taking the, advan the, the advice of someone who failed at something like that doesn't make sense. Wouldn't you be interested in me who's been vegan 20 years? you know, and like what's happened in my life and how I am now, wouldn't that be kind of a little bit more educational than some guy who did keto for six months after attempting a plant-based diet, which no one really does very well unless they really want to. Want to. Like you got to kind of do want to do it for the animals in the beginning and then you do it for health yeah. afterwards. But the people who just do it for health, they almost always fail because it's too yeah. easy to just, to, because it's too easy. If 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 you don't have like the the whole moral uh, side of it, to just go eat some dairy and and not be vegan anymore, like that's like, you know, it's super easy to do that if you don't really care that much. Um, and people, do you have you know, a, yeah. Do you have connections to like uh, the restaurant industry in LA? You so your family has one, right? Family, has yeah, a yeah. That was a nightmare. So you, yeah, I hear you. In the restaurants not a fun industry to work <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah, you said, um, well, I was just mentioning that because I feel like there's room for a vegetarian restaurant chain, you know, like you got Sweet Green, Chipotle, those are healthy chains. Sweet, like greens, room is, like, sweet greens is like my favorite. I love the sweet oh greens. Oh right? my I'll God, go there, they're, uh, they're spicy yeah. Thai salad, I think it's called. Yeah. Ooh. Pretty bomb, pretty bomb, yeah. <laughs> I love when they first came. I was eating it like twice a week. I was getting chubby because I was because their 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 dressing is like pretty fat. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's like so a thousand. Good. Yeah. Thousand so good, yeah. So good, yeah. Those those uh those salads are bomb. Yeah, I was hoping, but, but I was not a completely of like vegetarian. Like they still don't they do oh, no, meat no. stuff? Yeah. yeah, they have a bunch of meat stuff. But I just want I want to start a restaurant chain that's healthy, that's like. Dude, you'd, might, make might be you'd be the first one to do it. You'd make money. Yeah, first vegan. Like an in and out Like a vegan in and out Like really easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Think Something to think about. I don't know what it would be. There has to be some fad that turns into a long-term trend. Me and Allie want to do a uh, vegan Korean barbecue place. Because Korean barbecue is so fun. I know, but how do you? It's, I've had fake meat. It's Veg okay. Vegetables? Sometimes. No, vegetables. Yeah. Lots of vegetables. Yeah. Dude, vegan. Most vegans eat vegetables, dude. They don't eat that sh fake meat I shit. Know, that's that's for like entry level people that are just starting, that okay. still are fixated on all the meat stuff. You know, that's that's like plus that's marketing. That's supermarket shit. Like, like I die over big plates of vegetables. Like big plate of broccoli with like you know, whatever sauce and salt and pepper, you know, like seasonings on it, like that is the most amazing thing to me in the world to eat. And, um, you know, the whole beyond meat stuff like that, ah, that's cool. But those are novelties. Those aren't like people aren't supposed to eat that every day, just like you aren't supposed to eat, you know, big, big Macs every day. It's, it's like a novelty thing. But I think they, you know, a lot of people think, that vegans just eat that all day, you know, that just eat beyond products all day long. And it's like, when I used to do that, when I was eating soy and shit like that, I had, you know, I had hemorrhoids at 19 years old, you know, like my body was like, what the fuck are you eating? Like, this is gross. And most people are allergic to soy. It's not a very stable food. Um, so you mean like yeah, cooked is, I mean, soy is fermented soybean, something, something, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. Um, the, uh, or, or a lot of people are allergic to it yeah. without knowing and you eat it and you don't know it's doing anything to you, but it's fucking your stomach up. And that's why I would get hemorrhoids. And even recently, my brother, when my brother went vegan several years ago, I was over at his house and he's like, oh my God, I got hemorrhoids. And I'm like, well, open up his fridge and he's eating all that garbage, all the tofu base i think it's like i think it's the canola stuff. oil i think like yeah, it could be, yeah, it could be. To me. but I, when i got them i was i was literally living off of soy milk i would buy cases of soy milk and drink them all day when i was a kid like vanilla was it organic soy milk i don't even know if it was organic, organic dude 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah. like I was gut bombing myself just because I didn't know because I was a teenager and and I was simply vegan yeah. for yeah. the animals. I was not vegan for the health. So you have to be vegan for both if you expect to be successful in a way, you know, like obviously if if you have more, you're, you know, like you'd be more motivated than I would be because you're you're needing to to lose some pounds. So it's a little bit more motivating to go um, than if you're just kind of out of nowhere. Like I went vegan when I was a kid, just kind of out of nowhere. Um but um but so my yeah. buddy jordan my buddy jordan we just did a podcast where he's like hey you know like i hit a wall and i really do need to lose some more weight and you know calories in calories out is is similar to keto you know uh where you're eliminating you know and if you're in an emergency if it's an emergency these these diets you know i i get it you know, like if you're like, fuck, I need to lose 80 pounds as fast as possible because the doctor says that I'm going to fucking croak, you know, then it's like, all right, do calories in, calories out and, you know, do do, do the this kind of uh, elimination diet, but just temporarily and know that it's not supposed to be forever um, because you have to you can't uh, starve yourself and expect to stay healthy. A lot of people think, you know, muscles, oh, if someone has muscles, that means they're healthy. And that's not true, you know, like, and, um, you know, so, so, you know, yeah, you lot, like my buddy Jordan lost a bunch of weight. Like I couldn't even believe it was the same dude when I had the interview with him. I was like, whoa, but he looked very sick and he yeah. said he said he felt very sick and he st said he still does he doesn't know what to do because he still has a lot more weight to lose and he's hit a wall and that's and you will see this with almost everyone who's being honest about keto and carnivore too but most people most of these guys aren't being honest they're not they're eating some carbs that you, you can't live without carbs if you if you rob yourself of carbs for a while you will eat well, so many car you will binge eat carbs every once in a while and and screw your whole thing up and i think a lot of these keto guys they're like yeah. oh i've been doing it all month i'm just gonna eat a bunch of carbs right now you know like you can't live without carbs these guys saying they're taking intake zero carbs are absolutely lying you will die you will get hypoglycemia hyperglycemia no hypo like hypoglycemia well, is body... real and you will die eventually if you don't have glucose in your system so these dudes are lying that's mainly half the reason why I'm out here doing what I do debating these guys is because they're lying. You know, they're li they, there's there are people doing it and being honest, but there are a lot of people lying about it. And it's dangerously <laughs> lying. There are a really lot of funny. these guys are really doing steroids. There was like a, you should make like you should make like a comedy video of, of all these meat meatheads just like sneaking in a vegetable. You know, at, at midnight, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's true. Instead of sneaking in I'm like, you know. They're like, oh, I got to have my broccoli. And they just sneak, you know, tiptoe, tiptoe to the fridge at like three in the morning. Yeah. Um, you know, showing, trying to, trying to pretend that they're, they're all carnivore, but they're not, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I told yeah, Jordan, so, uh, I was just like, did, dude, did, yeah. just try to, try to do vegan on the weekends, you know, to start yeah. or try to do vegetarian on the weekends, you know, and then try to do vegan on the weekends, then try and do three days a week, then try and do four days a week. So what do you, uh, what do you and Allie, what do you and Allie do? Do you like, I, you know, I had a long-term girlfriend for a while and she would always cook. I didn't cook much, mostly because Allie's she just a didn't cooking like, beast. she knew. Allie she did, loves she, I wasn't, cleaning. yeah, my ex Michelle, she just didn't like to share the kitchen. She thought I was just messy. No, I, so, I've, I've, I don't. I think the first time of, I came over you know, to Allie's place, I tried to cook yeah. for her and she just looked at me weird the whole time and like pushed me out of the kitchen. I was like, yeah, what? And she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're lucky. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Bro. But um, yeah. So anyway, she, in a in a better next time I get around to a long term relationship, I will do like cooking on like Tuesdays or Wednesdays. And I think like the good a good pattern would be to like, all right, Tuesday night, I'm always cooking. Don't have to think about it. Just yeah. check the day and be like, all right, Alex is cooking tonight, unless otherwise specified. I think that's a good system. Do you guys do something like that? Or is she always cooking? Or no, she always cooks. Yeah, uh, okay. she always cooks. She so do like, Wednesday, she's... She's like Wednesday nights. 
like I obviously feed myself when she's at work and shit, but like yeah. we always have a, there's always a rice cooker full of rice. You know, rice is like, oh, yeah, I, I was it. never a big fan of rice in my life, but now oh, I am, I man. Rice, yeah. And like, yeah. like now I'm like, I fiend for it now. It's just pure, clean energy. And, um, <laughs> and then you can just, just put whatever clean. sauces, dude, I have a fridge full of sauces, you know, just like, vinegars and rice vinegars and and like you know like all these different things to throw on it so we could always make it different but just vegetables and rice and fruit just start trying to work more of it into your your diet I wanna, yeah i want I w- i'm sure you've heard this theory um but i want to drop it on the on the video so um my buddy is a fruitarian and he actually gave me something that i that makes a lot he, a lot of sense he says he only eats fruit he's a fruitarian so he's like your body will age the least because carbs are the easiest thing to process. Your yeah, body has to do the least work. It produces yeah. the least side pro- slide products. So he's like, if you want to live forever, and you piss, you you piss when you, when you eat too much carbs, you just piss it out. You know, it, okay. it, you're, yeah. um, true. Did, your body could just, just in and out. Sure. Okay. Maybe. Um, so maybe when, once your carbs. glycogen yeah. stores are full, um, it takes a long time to replenish your glycogen stores. That's why, you know, writing, you're emptying them every day and refilling them every day and emptying them. So it's like we have to eat a lot of carbs. Um, if yeah. we go, if I go out and I'm not carved up, like I can feel it in my legs. I'm like, oh, I did not have enough carbs. Um, and that, and so, yeah, like fat, obviously, you know, we don't piss fat out. You know, like you don't piss protein out. You can you shit out a lot of protein, that's for sure. But the yeah. protein sits in your yeah. stomach. And, um, you know, it, it just putrefies down there and like, you know, you get you know, diverticulitis, you know, from un, 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 uh, what is it? Undigested meat products that just sit in your stomach and protein and stuff that just sits there and your, your body, your muscles, you know, are trying to push it out. They're going shit the stuff out. But, um, that's why all these dudes fast. You know, all the carnivores and ketos are all, oh, fasting so great. Yeah, you have to fast because it's built up so much in your stomach that like you have to give a couple days of, of let it to let it flush out. But diver- diverticulitis is really very real thing where your stomach will actually bore holes in your intestines. I don't know if it's your intestines. Don't quote me on that. But it's yeah. it's like your colon or something. But it'll actually like push it so hard against whatever is in there that'll like bore holes in your stuff in your the lining of your guts and like yeah. that's really gross yeah, <laughs> you know you get, like, like it's sept- really fucking septus. gross yeah septus yeah septus like yeah um you know the it's weird. and you don't get this I, stuff I, from eating vegetables and fruit you know like it just doesn't happen it wouldn't, it wouldn't happen yeah, yeah, I mean, um, they always talked about dysentery. Dysentery being like a disease that killed, you know, thousands of people. A high, a high percentage of people died of dysentery back in like the medieval times oh, before. Like Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah, Oregon Trail. Even, even that. You died that, of dysentery. Yeah, yeah exactly. That was like yeah, a stuff. Yeah. Do you is think this, is that septus or is it something else? Do you know what I'm saying? I think it was. I think it was some sort of uh infection that toxic kind of, yeah. yeah toxic infection of of like your bowels or something or something you know who knows because really those dudes were only eating yeah. meat the whole time yeah. coming across the wagon trail days you know they weren't stopping for vegetables i mean they were maybe getting them along the way a little but they weren't like farming because they're traveling and they're just you know even organ trail the game you know like oh we're out of food go kill some deer you know, and you're just eating nothing yeah. but that. And then it goes back to even the Inuits, you know, like all these dudes, they're just like the Inuits lived off of, you know, nothing but meat. And they lived, it's like, they didn't live past 35 and they all, all they've, they've found all these ancient Eskimo mummies. Right. And they all have serious diseases. Like they all have pro- dietary diseases from, from eating that diet. You know, and, and, and then these people didn't live past 40. So it's like, why are you guys quoting diet? You know, you're cherry picking ancestral data and like leaving out the fact that these people didn't live long. Like, like, it's just, you know, like that's not a, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's super sketchy. Um, yeah. Uh, well, speaking of history and stuff, you got any good uh, conspiracy theories about history or anything like that? Any oh. good, uh, 
the I mean, Tartar- you're talking about Tartaria. Tartaria Tartarian stuff time. has changed a little yeah. bit. That's yeah. kind of turned more into a reset, reset there. Okay. Like just kind of um, like the, uh, the, the whole mud flood and the architecture, we all, you know, we're like, okay, there's this Tartar. Then like, as the years have gone by, it's, um, it's mostly turning into uh, Moorish history in Northern North America and um, Asiatic and Moorish uh, natives. Um, we have the West Coast, which is all the Asiatic natives that we have that are kind of Asian tri- Asian looking tribes that that immigrated here, you know, across the Aleutians and all that. And then on the on the West Coast, we had the Moorish influence, which are African, you know, not African. African American is is an absolute propaganda bullshit fake history <laughs> term. Um, yeah. Africans are actually the natives of the United States, um, and uh, the Spanish were coming here for hundreds of years and stealing um, our natives and putting them into slavery in other countries, and then um, the Spanish took a bunch of uh moors moorish natives from america to uh sierra leone sierra leone company is a corp is a is a is a is a city that is a a corporation and they took the black people the 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 american negroes um which are our natives uh and took them there to start a farm a slave farm and that is Africa as we know it now is started as a slave farm. Yeah, bro. Yeah, so the whole story they teach us is though they brought the Africans here from Africa, <laughs> right? And they're African Americans, but really they were the people who owned the country first. And that was the whole oh, we did killed all the native Indians, the red-skinned Indians with the feathers in their hairs and the oh, all that stuff, all the the Western movies, all that history was bullshit to cover up the fact that the Moors ran North America and were were the majority of um, the people here uh, before the before the Europeans got here. So yeah, so this shit's getting really fun. Uh, Florida, uh, Florida might have been. Florida is looking like it is. Um, 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 Garden of Eden and um, what's uh, Atlantis. Um, and mm. it turns out that, oh, so, so, so along with this stuff. So on top of that, uh, the Egyptian, <laughs> all the Egyptian shit, all the Egyptian shit in Egypt, all the artifacts and everything that was all here. It was actually sent there because all Egypt and the Garden of Eden and Atlantis and all that was is is the Gulf of Mexico and Florida and all that that's the fertile crescent um, that they talk about in the Bible um and uh all this stuff was happening in North America that they've lied to us about they told us oh we just came here and it was just empty and there are a couple couple savages we had to kill them you know and like it's 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 all this BS. Um, so, so basically, you know, the Phoenicians and the Moors and the Canaanites, uh, fled Europe, you know, in the 13, 14, 15th, you know, long, long, long time ago, they fled Europe because they were being, you know, they were being, um, you know, there were, there was the Catholic, you know, everybody was fighting over religions. And so a bunch of people left that either weren't religious or were being prosecuted, persecuted for their religion. And um, the Phoenicians um, are the ones are the reason we have all the giant art deco in uh, art deco Greco Roman uh, yeah. buildings in the U S all the, all our capitals and all that stuff. That's all Phoenician influence. They were, they yeah. are like the Greeks, the ancient, you know, like that there, they built those in memory of their homes you know, back in, in, um, Europe. And then, uh, you know, like, why would we build our capitals out of European buildings when we just kicked Europe out of our country? You know, there's just like a lot of things that don't, don't make sense. Um, so yeah, in Florida, uh, and, and so, so the, so the Phoenicians are the way, are the, are the, uh, Europeans who built the, uh, art of the, uh, art, the, the Greco-Roman shit and the uh, f- the a lot of the other stuff 
um, is Moorish. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I got to grab a drink. Yeah. I'm going to grab it. Smoke. All right, that's better. So, yeah, it, it is strange that we, uh, all of our official fancy architecture is some European. Sort of, yeah, yeah. I was looking at yeah, it's, it is, I don't even know what it's called. There's Gothic, there's a uh, classical Greek, there's Moorish, there's uh, the Moorish. So, the Moorish stuff, have you been to Florida? Not in a while. Okay, so really Florida's bad. fucking crazy, dude. So yeah. most all the old buildings in Florida are Moorish buildings that were built out of um, their local stone. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot the name of it, but it's really tough stuff. And so there are these cities that have these beautiful buildings in them. And they say, oh, yeah, they're from 1840, 1840, 1840 1850, yeah. 1840, you know, and it's like, you look at these buildings and that you, you know what Mark Morish architecture looks like. There's blue, black and white stripes on everything. Really, really interesting, very like unique looking stuff. And um, mm -hmm. you know, there that you start researching the history of Florida. There is um this guy, uh, Flagler. Um, there are all these robber barons that took over Florida. It was Edison and Flagler and this guy named Plant and this what guy. Uh, Henry Ford, so Henry Ford yeah. and Thomas Edison had a house in Florida that was connected because they both were like, so they're, you know, they're just weirdos. Those dudes, all those robber barons, they're the guys who inherited all the technology from the from the previous people who we were who were here. Uh, electricity, um, who's what's his name? Uh, Tesla. Tesla was is an inheritor of that stuff. He didn't do any of that. He reverse engineered it and presented it to everyone. Same with Edison. All these all these stories of these dudes, you know, these guys were just the guy. They, these were the Elon Musks at the time that the government was like, you know, hey, you know, be be a front for socialism, basically, you know, like go out. We're going to we're going to give you all this stuff and all this funding to go do these things that we can't do. Because we're the government, we're not supposed to yeah. be doing this stuff. So, so these guys were all the guys at the time, these inventors that were like inventing dozens of things a month, you know, these like super brains that, that they, you know, just the story doesn't make sense. And so all these dudes are living yeah, in Florida, Florida, Florida picking Florida. Florida. Yeah. You know, it's like why, you know, there's there's um Sturgeon Springs is a is a part of Florida where allegedly is where the garden of eden was and it's only only greeks live there and only greeks have ever lived there in as far back in history as you can go and it's like there it's like it's the, the theory is that they you know the, the greeks know ancestrally that's where they used to be you know in the garden of eden and like you know it's it's the 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 tartarian stuff has turned really fun there's a channel called old world florida that is just really good um and then um the mind and um there's yeah, a couple imagine, links i could send you but yeah imagine florida pretty interesting like, stuff imagine florida in like 1800 crazy you know, it crazy been, place like, weirdest fucking place there's no all these and weird imagine, animals and like yeah, yeah. Not settling there it's such a yeah. nice weather and it's you know why wouldn't you just go to florida and like 1800 why why would you be like a dutch farmer in pennsylvania in 1800 yeah or like bakersfield <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah like like, like there's a there's a guy i don't know if you're to coral castle coral castles in florida it's another kind of strange strange coral rock building that this guy this old guy allegedly this old tiny eastern european guy built this entire castle by himself somehow he says he was using technology uh, but he would never show anyone the technology and so you know the tartarian shit that's the russian area and the tartarian shit they knew electro electricity a lot better than the than the powers that be have told us that they knew electricity they had machines they had you know they they knew you know um you know, alternators and, you know, all these things, they, they had this stuff before. That's why we had um, the world's fairs 
and Edison and all these guys showing, oh, look yeah. at all the stuff we made when it was really our the previous people that were here, the previous high technology civilization that was here. Um, so uh, where was I getting with the electricity? <laughs> well, you're talking about you're talking about Florida and that weird East. Oh, so it's the it's dude, like, yeah. So the dude passes away, and um, there's all this junk that no one can recognize there that's still there, but we figured out what his junk was, and it, it it's all this just like Stone Age electrical shit, like that this dude dude just made out of copper wires and making this crazy shit so he basically made a saw electric saw and an electric crane to help him cut and move the blocks around but he never showed yeah, anyone crane, the crane seems like the name of the game there yeah, yeah for sure but it, but yeah. these were electronic and this is the 1800s like early 18 like i don't know I don't, actually i don't need to i can't i shouldn't pull the number out of my head this was so it was Roughly, there's photographs yeah. of them so it's uh it's post 1840 Sure. So this is, you know, it's the late 1800s, maybe the turn of the century. This dude has an electric saw, an electric crane, and he's from Eastern Europe. And the explanation he gives is, oh, you know, uh, this is passed down knowledge from my ancestors. You know, like the few things he ever said, you know, like the few stuff, the few things that he left behind um you know his memoirs things he said blah 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 because he was a tourist trap basically so it it's it's something that he brought back from from eastern europe he brought here this technology and this wasn't technology that we had yet and so for a hundred years people were like how the fuck did this guy do this shit and then someone figured out by looking at all his junk that he had just made these machines back in the day. And so when you think about that and you apply that to like the fucking pyramids, yeah. you know, yeah. or whatever, all these fucking buildings we're seeing all over the place that don't see that seem to be way older than, than they're, they're letting on. And then there's no story why they're the, the archi that ar architecture is used for this certain thing. Like it just, it looks like we've, we repopulated North America, North America, there were cities, you know, and we repopulated it. Um, that was the whole orphan, the orphan trains. It was bringing European and East coast children, orphans and, uh, People, uh, family, uh, families that died in the wars, children left over from wars, bringing them all here to repopulate the country with a bunch of children that don't know their history. Uh -huh. So the powers that be can rewrite history and everyone's just going to buy it and no one's ever going to question it. And they put up all these beautiful insane asylums in every fucking state <laughs> to, yeah. to the people that denied the, the reset were taken to these places and re-educated and then let loose again, you know, after having brain lobotomies and stuff like that to, to yeah, control. Lo yeah. Lobotomies and stuff. And that, yeah, that stuff was just electro like, shop share therapy. As much, all as, that I think, stuff. as much as I think the modern world has fallen off in a lot of ways, you just think about all of oh, that. Things were way worse back then. Yeah, dude, so <laughs> bad back then. It was like, it was we tough were, to live past 45 back then. Yeah, we were medieval until like, 50 years ago that's what and they say now, now we're gonna go yeah now we're gonna right now we're gonna go back to medieval again but we had a a blip of you know like uh, i don't know what you'd call from 1950 to present i don't know what you'd call it like um calling it you know modern hyper modernization so, of the west so coast dumb, of the so united dumb, states it is so dumb and myopic to call any any century the moderns you know you can call it the present but why would you call it like um po the word modern and postmodern and what was the word before modern what do they call it classical classical are renaissance we like, are we like admitting to ourselves that there will be 
you know, that we're finished because this is modern and there's no more modern. Well, you know, that's almost how <laughs> they've they've uh, named right. the resets that happen. You know, they had to call it something because there was a big change in everything. And so they can't call it a reset without people going, well, who reset it and why did they reset it? So they just call it the the, the classical period or like the, you know, when yeah, like the, yeah. the pre the dark ages, <laughs> you know, like all these things that happen. Um, but there was definitely um there was definitely like some sort of cataclysm in the yeah, early 1800s yeah. that that they don't want us to know about for some reason or has been forgotten somehow you know maybe i mean we can't say it's all a big conspiracy maybe we forgot about it maybe Maybe, you know, 90% of the world was wiped out and, you know, the people that the people that re repopulated didn't keep good records in the beginning, you know, and then we just kind of had to make up something for when the country was made, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's as simple as that, too. Like, it could be as simple as that. But there definitely seems like there was some sort of um, reset and that happened in the 1800s early 1800s maybe late 17s maybe you know who knows um well uh but yeah the, the, then, then, then 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 the powers the like mainstream to counter all this tartarian stuff that we're looking at the 1800 we're looking at more recent times to counter this you got like joe rogan um having guys on talking about younger dryas do you know what younger dryas is I don't know. Younger, younger Dryas is um, Young, younger, a cataclysm yeah. that happened, yeah. uh, I think it's 12,500 years ago. Um, Russell, what's the guy's name? Russell the two dudes. No, there's two dudes, two nerdy paleontologists, historian dudes that are on Rogan all the time. Oh, um, and they're interesting dudes. They but... Or Donald Russell. No, um, God, I wish if Ali was here, she's like, she's my brain she for names yeah. and dates and and specifics. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, they, if you if you Google Younger Dryas, Younger Dryas, you'll see, and it's Y O U N G E R, like Younger Dry D R Y A S. You'll see all yeah. all their stuff. But um, but so this is getting pushed on Rogan, right? And Rogan is fucking mainstream as fuck. So this is their <laughs> response to Tartaria and us being like, something happened the last couple hundred years. So they're saying, no, focus on 12,500 years back. That's what's important. You'll never hear a fucking word about the Tartarian reset on Joe Rogan, but you'll hear about younger Dryas, something that happened far more long ago that we we have far less evidence it's, of it's, it's the typical it. fucking <laughs> shit yeah it's the typical <laughs> oh distract you know and so you got all these uh rogan cult of rogan group think um types that are just like uh you know it's just like the people when flat earth happened like flat earth was really big for a long time and then all the 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 counter propaganda and all the like people the the counter the people on the other side finally got the balls to start talking shit and then the mainstream was talking shit and now no one really talks about flat earth anymore it's the same thing people started talking about tartarians now uh tartarian stuff now there's this wave of like oh no that's bullshit because joe rogan had this guy on you know oh the timeline's different and there's all this like counter arguments for the subject that wasn't even a subject five minutes ago um and we're seeing it come out in the mainstream. And it, it's just really interesting because, um, I mean, I even, I got attacked by this YouTuber, this giant YouTuber who made a video making fun about fun of me, one of my Tartarian videos. Um, you know, it's like, it's like the new flavor of the week. Um, people are like starting to be, Oh, mu mud flood. Come on. And it's like, have you seen like, volcanic eruptions before like mud definitely you know like you could yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not that far off. even big storms you'll see mud floods happen you know like so it's not even that far off yet yeah, i mean pompeii pompeii was a thing you know there's you know pompeii yeah. actually is a giant 
fake exhibit two. <laughs> Bro, I love it. I love it. Oh, no, <laughs> you, you should you should look into that shit, man. It's I'm turning right. out that, that a lot of a lot of the scientists first, have gone to, to Palm Bay and they're like, wait a minute, this shit's not <laughs> acting up. This isn't you know these things aren't adding up. Like there's a bunch of stuff there that's completely fabricated, and so it's like, okay, well. If you're admitting to fabricating half this shit, how much of this is really, really, really real? And then just like the um, Pompeii was never not on a map, even though they said that it was covered up for a thousand years. You can go back and look at all these maps over hundreds and thousands of years. And there's Pompeii, Pompeii, Pompeii. There was never not a Pompeii on the map, even though their story is it was completely flattened and covered up oh, until yeah. recently by Krakatoa or whatever that volcano was. Krakatoa? Uh, I think so. Maybe, Vesuvius, yeah. Vesuvius, Mount Vesuvius. Krakatoa was another big volcano. But no, yeah. the Pompeii shit's bullshit too. And, that, and this is like, this is like when you start to learn or you start to accept or you learn enough to where you actually believe, oh, wow, that was bullshit. It's like, okay, then how much of our stuff have they been lying to us about if if we have if we have evidence of history being faked you know how much of it do we know is real or not and then when we look at the mainstream story the mainstream stories never made sense so north america uh, all of the rest of the world totally populated but north america is just like barren empty land which is some red red indians running around on it you know and then then we just came here and you know and it's like there's a reason why we're we are all as species uh, as races separated there was some time when we were all mixed up so and black people came from, smart, from america and not from africa. someone some authority separated everyone and and put us into different places and yeah. Throughout history, you know, different nationalities have been in different places. We've moved around, but like we've been raised to think everyone has been where everyone is forever. And that's just not the case oh, yeah, because definitely. they're trying to cover up the fact that we there have been other like advanced civilizations living in North America. Um, they just, you know, after that reset, you know, U.S. Geological Survey, you know, they are. Yeah. Yeah. USGS and the um, what's they the the it. museum that fakes everything and uh, oh, the uh, Smithsonian. Smithsonian. So yeah. the Smithsonian and the USGS went over every inch of North America, <laughs> destroyed yeah. a bunch of shit. You know, took kept track of you know what minerals. You know, destroyed anything having to do with the history. You know, some things were missed, and that's why we have a few uh examples of of like uh ruins in the in north america we have bar barely anything because usgs did such a good job of getting rid of everything so you know like all the mounds up in you know uh wisconsin and and around mississippi there's mounds indian mounds like those are just piles of fucking ruins that they they've covered up and they're like don't there's there's don't dig there there's laws against it you know like and it's like right there we just don't know you know, so all these all, all this stuff has been like basically scraped off of North America by U.S. Geological Survey and whoever repopulated, whoever was the brain behind repopulating uh, the West. So, yeah, I mean, like, you know, when 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 me and Ali first met you, we were like three months into the Tartarian shit. And now we're like a year and a half and, and it's <laughs> it's all evolved quite a bit. And it's almost it's you, went not on, so you went on the first day and you're like, you like Tartaria, too? I'm so <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's like the Tartarian stuff and the mud flood stuff was like the first kind of interesting fantasy part of it that kind of got us in not fantasy. I can't say that it's well, like you know, it's, it's harder to prove the Tartarian stuff. And it's like easier to prove the Phoenician and Morris shit because we still have like the Tartarians came. The Tartarians were here before all that. So they yeah. were the the earlier earlier, which we really have hardly. Uh, like I I'm like all the I think all the Tartarian stuff was wiped off of North America except for maybe a few of the star forts, which were too hard to destroy, um, like Saint yeah. Augustine and like the, some of these forts that they say were that are uh, Civil War forts. They're actually far older, 
and um, they're so big and hard to destroy. They just, you know, it's not like it's a little native village that, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a couple hundred dudes can destroy the whole place. You know, Star Fort's like a giant stone fort. It's a little bit harder to get rid of. So they had to make some stories around why that was there. And the Civil War, it turns out, you know, was a giant, colossal fucking uh, story t lying to us about all kinds of stuff. Um, the Civil War was likely um, fought against uh, the 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 the, le the last of the holdouts of those guys before, because um, there were of course like native people living in bushes and shit, like they say. But then there was also, you know, like pretty advanced modern um, society here. Um, so after the the uh, the cataclysm, you know, there were still there were still holdouts here when the Europeans came here. And so the more the uh, Christopher Columbus was actually chasing, um, you know, that Christopher Columbus was a part of the group that got rid of the Moors and the Moors left to North America. And then they found out the Moors were there. And that's why Christopher Columbus went there was to go with his army to go wipe out the the, the what's left of the Moors. And that and like that's why, and then they just tell us this story like, oh yeah, they were just doing all this innocent stuff out here, and it's just like no, like, like you 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 these, and it's I mean, of of course a lot of this is speculation, but it just makes way more fucking sense if you're really, um, into uh history and uh geopolitics in the world, you know, in the past five hundred years. None, you know, all this, the whole story of America, USA, just like doesn't make sense at all. Um, and it's because the powers that be, the victors have lied to us because why would they tell us the truth? They just want to tell us the version of the story that sounds best for them. You know, history is written by the victor. So, you know, when you're, you're looking through history and a bunch of stuff all of a sudden doesn't make sense, it's like, OK, um, but what what and then you could you can use common sense and speculate and get probably a lot closer in your story to what actually happened versus what they teach us in the school books, um, you know, that are clearly the mainstream uh, status quo version of what our history is, which is we just came here for all different people from all, all around the world came here and wiped out the Indians and where there's just we just don't we have we have 50 years of history, you know, that's it. Like on the West Coast, everything's, oh, this place, vintage building, 50 years old. You know, like it's not, it's all, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like, why? Well, it's it's like just like World War II doesn't make sense why, why World War II started. So, you know, so, yeah. so Germany invaded a tiny country called Poland and the whole world had to go there to stop them for some reason. Like, uh, that doesn't make sense. You know, yeah. if they didn't know about the Holocaust yet, why would they have gone there? You know, like doesn't make any sense. And, you know, and that's where you start. Point. That's where you have to start going. OK, what are they lying about? You know, obviously yeah. they wouldn't tell us the truth because they probably did something wrong to get where they are to be the authority, you know, to be the, po the power that be to be the elite. They probably did a bunch of wrong shit to get there. So they're not going to tell you that they're going to tell you a different version. And that version is going to have a lot more holes in it. And so when you start seeing holes and even, you know, like me and Ali, we just look at everything they taught us in school, like everything that they seriously shoved down our throats in school, like the San Francisco earthquake. You start looking at the San Francisco earthquake. You're like, what is up with this story? Like yeah, this story. Yeah. And then yeah, you're like, how crazy. did the same thing happen in every other big city in the USA too? big fire, big something that destroyed the whole place, you know? And it's like, so why weren't, why were, if they could build such beautiful fucking buildings, why would they build them so unsafely that these cities would burn down completely? Like, it just doesn't make any sense if they're so fucking, like, if you look at some of these buildings, dude, they don't show us this shit in school. Like, if you've seen the architecture I've seen researching this shit for the last couple of years, your mind would be blown. And to say that they were so dumb to make this shit, you know, so unsafe 
the, the entire cities would burn down multiple times and they just keep building San Francisco in one of the worst seismic areas <laughs> you could ever. Be, and they just keep rebuilding the city there. Yeah. Thousands of people die. Oh, we're just going to build it here again, you know, instead of uh, over in Marin County, you know, where, where it's not as bad, you know, on the other yeah. side, like it's just none of it makes sense. And, 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 and then, you know, like if you look back, Oakland wasn't there, you know, there weren't all these huge cities surrounding the, the, the peninsula. So they could have easily just been like, Hey, let's just leave this for like grazing land for cattle or like farming and just rebuild the city over there. But no, they got to build it right on the carcasses of all the people that died there. There was seven earthquakes and fires that destroyed San Francisco seven different times, seven, seven times. Like, why would you just build another giant city there? Like, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, the insurance companies, I mean, at some point, the insurance companies would stop insuring. Yeah. Shit, but, yeah. And even now they built that giant building and it's tilting. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. there's no, you know, and, you know, the San Francisco earthquake, um, most of the damage was done by the authorities dynamiting buildings, driving around dynamiting build buildings, forcing people out of their homes at gunpoint, and then dynamiting the building, saying, "Oh, we're, it's 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 going to stop the fire." Sounds like the world. Sounds like the World Trade Center to me. Yeah, they're like, "It's going to stop yeah. the fire." They're like, "Wait, aren't these giant stone buildings? They're pretty. You know, there's only so much wood in them." You know, won't they just burn and leave the the shell? And it, and if if you blow it up, won't that make it like more susceptible to fire? Since you're like, there's no like rock walls stopping the fire from moving. Like it's just once you get down and scrutinize their story, none of it makes sense. It's just complete bullshit. Uh, me and Ali have read like several hundred personal accounts from the San Francisco earthquake, and they read two ways. They read one way, which is this big, fanciful story that's written very well and has lots of big vocabulary in it and very like, woo, and, and then it's just like, oh, the authorities saved everyone. And then everything, and then the other stories are, um, how come half the people in the city are happy that it's b being blown up right now? <laughs> How come, you know, it's like, how come I was just forced out of my house at gunpoint and my house is perfectly fine and the authorities just dynamited it and, and, you know, literally almost poked me with a bayonet to get me to get everyone like, so it's like there, there's the version that was written about it. And then there's the actual personal accounts that are like half the people in the city seem happy that it's being destroyed right now. What is going on? And then you look at all this photography. And there's happy people watching, throwing a party as their fucking city's being destroyed. Um, you know? Yeah. So it's like, like I have several yeah. photographs of people ear to ear posing in front of their city being burnt down. And so it's like, okay, well, that was there like two yeah. so, like societies living there one of them knowing that this was going to go down right. and and that group knowing that they would benefit from that like israel yeah you know what i mean like yeah no doubt what is you know like and so we're reading this me and ali like what is go what the fuck and then the more deep the di deeper we go just the more bullshit and it's just it's all really strange and like you know like this is all very ballpark you know this is all speculation i'm not saying any of this is true but i'm saying it makes a lot more sense and we do have evidence for a lot of this stuff um uh, uh, you know, in San Francisco as well as in, in other places, but it's super interesting. You know, it's more it's more fun than arguing on Facebook about nothing. You know. <laughs>
What did you think about that cop that fucked the whole department? In? <laughs> the whoa. Uh, did you read about that's that? Definitely. It's like the egg, egg, the egg shortage, and that chick are like definitely the topic oh, of the week. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> I've seen. Like, what are they distracting egg. us from? You know, yeah. like yeah. the egg thing's uh, funny because true. everybody's yeah. so mad because uh, you know those subsidies aren't aren't working as well. Oh um, no, Papa Biden's not paying for my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh that yeah. chick yeah that's pretty funny i mean, I mean that, I, i'm not i'm not to, i'm not one to kink shame man man you know yeah i mean uh <laughs> don't you, if you like dysfunctional government then uh i mean you know shit probably happens a lot we just don't hear about it oh the police are there's cor- i mean you, like when i see the word corruption in my head what pops up cops government you yeah. know like that's basically the dictionary definition of corruption did you ever see that movie with al pacino it was um about it starts with an s uh he was a part of a corrupt serpico yeah serpico yeah it's a good movie yeah it's not bad it was a little slow to get to the point yeah but, it's you know, real slow yeah he becomes this like artist artist he's like the He's like the one that gets to. He starts like wearing whatever he wants to the department, kind of being like, yeah. And, like, and they're like, like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, and, and he rebels against the police force and joins right. the the criminals. Yeah, I guess I don't know what happens, but I, I don't know. Like, there's got to be some force to keep people honest, but maybe there's not in the police, local police. No, the, the 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 greater good of humanity is what's going to keep everyone honest and and men knowing that they are the ones who are the the authorities that are supposed to keep people honest. It's 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 not until you you're like, oh, no, don't stop that emergency from happening. The cops will deal with it, you know, that we start pulling out our phones and, and watching shit, bad shit happen. And pulling out our phones mm-hmm. and calling the cops instead of just stopping it ourselves. We, you know, the free market humanity you know like we'll deal with with the bad actors that are around with government you're guaranteed bad actors and they're coming from the government um you know like the cops like you're not like we could you could you could expect to drive down the highway and not get robbed if there's no government around you know um but if there's government around you know a cop can stop you and take your shit guaranteed just like you're guaranteeing okay so there's the there's the chance that in in a free market like in a free world there's a chance there could be very little um bad actors but when with cops around you're guaranteed bad actors there's no guarantee that there aren't bad actors around you're guaranteed actors because you're you're training bad actors to go act bad you know like you're guaranteed bad actors so left alone you know just the craziest of the crazies act up and us as men know how to deal with them all right so we need to put some money together to have some sort of place to put these crazy crazy people not jail not where we need cops and judges and all this government and 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 then they do it the worst way possible you know, the least efficient, most expensive way possible, most detrimental to the community, most detrimental to the people involved. You know, they're not doing it the right way. So but in a free market, in a, in a, in a free society where the the men, you know, the people have the the ability to figure out the right ways of doing it, you know, like and then, you know, and, and like I said, it's, it's just the craziest of the crazies that are really doing these things, not all these I think I have a made up crimes. Yeah. It's all these made up crimes. The police made all oh, these speeders, fucking criminals everywhere. No, those aren't those aren't criminals. They've 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 taken a word that was made for a very specific type of person and applied it to way more people than that. So it's like at the end of the day, what murders, rapists, robbers. I really do people. believe that. I you do know? believe that we should airdrop criminals just like in another country. And if they make it back here, then fine. You yes. Know, like, yeah. 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 Like yeah. We could drop them on our enemies, uh, dude. We yeah. could drop them yeah. in in the in the Mojave fucking desert, you know, and like they're <laughs> no, I you know, you just find a shitty be... no, 
dude yeah. okay here's a great great thing we can talk about i don't have that much more time but oh, uh, yeah, whatever a government here. so what a society looks like without government the government disappears tomorrow right all these cities um become insurance based communities so if you want to live in la mm -hmm. you got to uh knock on the door and say, hey, I want to live here. And they're going to go, all right, well, these are our rules. Yep. Sign it. You know the rules. So you know if you kill someone here, if you do this, if you do that, do, do, do that, you know the consequences. And you have to buy this insurance that's $2 a month that, uh, you know, that says that you're going to stick to these rules. And, um, you know, and if you don't... So it's like taxes, $2, $2 taxes. Yeah, so if you don't, um, if you kill someone, your the family of who you killed immediately gets cashed out because we we don't need to go to court. You already know, you know, the insurance company is going to have an adjudication, you know, process that they're going to be like, all right, who killed who? You know, I that see, something will some happen. I see some families selling out of their, their least favorite family member for yeah. the cash prize. So, yeah. so um, no, of course, there it's not going to be that easy. Um. But, um, you know, you have to and then you get ejected from town and you can't come back because this insurance provider isn't going to sell insurance to you. So you have to go live in a place where they will take you or go live out in the badlands where you can't get in to any place. So there's incentive to be a good human in this in anarchy land because you'll be able to get in to the good places and all these cities, they'll all be different. You know, they'll all have different flavors. They'll all probably stay the same. You know, all the libs will go up to San Francisco and, you know, like everyone will still keep congregating where they're going. And they'll have, you know, San Francisco will be more like a like more like a liberal America now that, that we have now. Like they'll, they'll be different flavors. There'll be anarchy towns where no one does anything. There'll be Muslim towns where everyone's Muslim. You know, like people will do, you know, like what they've already done it will just be the towns will instead of a government you'll have these uh you know free market solutions free market uh and and insurance and i mean people people always are insurance based societies but it's not like oh you have to pay all this money to live here it's no you're paying jack shit if you're a good human but if you're a bad human you're gonna pay more insurance and if you're a really bad human you get kicked out and you can't get back in Unless you, you do something, redeem yourself in some way and get your your credit score back down, I guess. And it's, it starts to sound really authoritarian, but it's not because you have a choice. Everyone has a choice to be in that town and to go by those rules. And if they don't like that rule, they can go to the next town that doesn't have that rule. That And it's, it's so it's more like instead of the whole country with federal laws that are blanketing every community has their own laws and requirements for living there and insurance companies that are offering the best bang for your buck are running these places because um you know you can't have a monopoly without government making the monopoly so if there's no government you're going to have big corporations that are going to fight each other and whoever instead of I just own the rights to this area and you have to deal with charter communications and you can't get another fucking and you can't get another internet server that's better. Um, you know, you have true competition where the best product that is the best price wins and wins all the, uh, you know, and, and in order to be the best product with the best price, you also have to be like a, a good company, you know, like because people, People will be voting with their do dollar more in these communities, um, you know, like and, and yeah. you know, everyone everyone thinks if we get rid of the government, it's going to be Wild West. And it's like, no, actually, it's going to be amazing. It'll be hard for a few months, but we'll figure the shit out. And, and if things oh, yeah. go the direction I was like how I'm just explaining this, it would be really interesting. And especially now that we have crypto, dude, and we have smart contracts to do all these things decentralized with no human making any of the judgments um with on an opinion a protocol that has been set up software that's set up to do something immediately no matter what and so no courts 
no, co- you know, like we don't need any of this shit that's all corrupt. That's just, you know, a court is just a place for for you to get fucked, basically, you know, like any they can do anything they want there. So why would we leave humans when we can use cryptocurrency and the blockchain and smart contracts and stuff like that to just do it for us? Um, you know, that's kind of there's a it's a this is a most of most of this idea is um, from a, uh, a Ludwig von Mises uh, lecture by Robert Murphy. Um, but it's like it's I mean, like it's a feasible that, explanation. All choices. What's that? Oh, I was just saying, it's all about choices. Without yes. choices, you get to hear me every time. It's every We don't time. have a choice here now. We have to pay the tax. We have to do everything or else they will kill us. They'll throw us in jail and kill us. In this society, in much. this anarchist society, you have a choice. You can opt out. You can bail. You know, like, it might not be, you know, like, it might not be... Like the only thing you'll be dealing with that's a bummer is like geological, you know, like uh, ge- geographic issues where like, oh, I'd rather live in, Cal- you know, L.A. than San Francisco. But San Francisco is more my kind of a place, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, But yeah, insurance, it's chaos insurance. theory, insurance based societies and then hooked. And this is all stuff that was that was. This was all stuff that was came come up with in the 80s before they even knew about crypto or the Internet. So now it's like they were all like, well, we don't really know what the free market's going to look like then because we're not there yet. And we're not free market experts. I mean, we're free market experts, but we aren't we aren't, you know, like inventing the stuff that's happening that's going to happen in the future. So we know something's going to come up that, that might figure this out. And and crypto is what came up. And um the uh, you know just having well next time yeah yeah i know you i know you gotta go but next time i really want to ask you about where you would live in the world if you weren't guys if you guys weren't in la i like la but uh i'm always looking for new places to go i would never want to live in the same place for more than a couple years yeah you guys have been for a while so yeah i'm I'm wondering where you guys are gonna go to next you guys know yet i got i have one kid here and one kid in North Carolina. And so I kind of have to be around North America, obviously. But we're, um, you know, Allie's got her family here in L.A. Uh, I'm an L.A. I mean, I'm a West Coast kid. Like, I'm pretty much going to mm-hmm. stick to yeah. West Coast-ish. Um, you know, maybe Arizona for a little bit, maybe up north. I always thought I'd 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 retire in the Pacific Northwest or Northern California or something like that. Um, yeah. but I'm not one of these like, oh, I gotta move to a more free state, you know, because yeah. like there's not a more free state. Much difference. There's not no, much difference there's no yet. difference. Yeah. Just and, and then like, like yeah. Yeah. there's plenty of lib shit going on in every state. And there's plenty of bullshit laws in every state. You know, some states might be better about certain things, but I'm not going to go live in some shitty envi- like in some shitty weather simply to be able to like walk around with a gun on my hip, with a gun. you know, <laughs> like, you know, like I'm not one of those types, uh, but I, I am. But I do believe I am a nomadic species that is more happy moving around. And I've lived out of the country. I've traveled yeah. a lot. I've lived on boats. I've lived in RVs. I've lived in houses like you know, and I just I like moving a lot. I don't like living in the same place more than a certain amount of time because it just starts getting depressing. And we're just not supposed to be doing that by design of our bodies. Yeah. If we stay in the same place and shit in the same place. We get sick and die, you know, like <laughs> that's true, man. Yeah. Like eventually. Yeah we'll, talk, yeah, we'll talk about it next time. I'm going to I'll bring some uh, some good stuff for you next time. Thanks for the enlightenment and uh you know, hey man, I'll Friday. send you some it's links to all the things. I'll send you links to everything we talked do. about tonight, yeah, and I'll that. put them in the description too. Um, lots of fun stuff. All right, bro. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Let's try I and do this it. like once a um, month. We'll talk again soon, dude. Yeah, I love it. We'll do it, man. All right, peace out. Peace. Go vegan. Later, bro. Yeah.